Welcome back everyone to another historical knitting video. This time I'm going to knit a lace doily from the 1845 book Me's Companion to the Work Table. After last time where I spent many light nights over a few weeks finishing up the stockings, which I really enjoyed knitting, I thought this time I would switch it up in two ways. First I'm going to go a little bit earlier in the Victorian era, so rather than knitting something from an 1892 pattern book, I'm going to go for something from an 1845 pattern book but I'm also gonna knit something that hopefully doesn't take quite as much time. The main challenge with the pattern that I chose is the fact that the lace is not written as a chart, but it's written line by line, and in terms that maybe were standard in 1845, but definitely aren't standard today. So I'm gonna to have to do some work to translate it to something that I understand. The other challenge is that there's no picture. So I actually don't know what I'm working towards. I don't really have a visual reference, which I usually like, but it's also kind of exciting because once I finally finish my piece, it's kind of like it reveals itself to me as I'm knitting it. So wish me luck as I knit this lace doily from 1845. I use Knit Picks Lindy Chain in the colorway Swan, which is a 70% linen, 30% cotton yarn. The pattern does call for 100% cotton, but this is all I had, so it's what I used. The first step was to chart out the lace pattern. Like I said, it was written in 1845 knitting terms, line by line, and I just don't work well off of that, so I decided to chart it out and translate it to the knitting terms that I understand. One thing though, and that's what I'm noting here, is that there's definitely a line in here that doesn't really make any sense in the context of the rest of the pattern. I decided to just keep on charting to see if hopefully I can figure it out as I write it more. Didn't really help. So I decided to try to just knit up a few samples. I went through quite a few iterations of the doily before I finally made one that I think turned out as intended. I don't want to show you all of the different notes and notebooks I went through to actually create this pattern, but I personally think it turned out very nice. The pattern starts off asking you to cast on four stitches across four needles. I thought that this is quite difficult, as the needles are a bit long in comparison to the small four stitches, so I cast on four to one needle and then transferred each stitch to its own needle, and I held up my stitches in this way and I knit in a very unique fashion as I'm trying to demonstrate here, but I found that if I held my needles this way and I knit like this, I had a less chance of actually dropping or twisting my stitches. This is an example that I'm showing here right now of how I did the yarn overs in the beginning while knitting kind of all these tiny stitches on these needles. After putting two stitches on each needle, I decided to let the needles go to the natural double pointed needle holding position, which in this case kind of looks more like a sea urchin, so be careful not to poke yourself too much while you're trying to knit this. It's definitely difficult and very fiddly in the beginning, and I was a bit over-caffeinated when I was doing the first part, so I ended up dropping my stitches quite a few times. But once you get to four or six stitches per needle, it gets a lot easier. At this point, I'm actually done with the doily, and I'm at the point of casting off. You should cast off quite loosely, because you're going to end up blocking this doily and opening up the lace pattern quite a bit, so you want it to stretch really, really easily. At this point, the instructions say to pick an edging to trim your doily with. So I decided to pick the open edging for trimming and chart out that lace pattern as well. This edging is worked across 14 stitches with 7 repeats. I actually found that after a few times of working the repeats, it got pretty easy to memorize and it went quite quickly. It was also a really unique trimming and I really liked how it looked up against the doily that I had finished before. When I had enough lace edging to loosely wrap around my doily, it was time to stitch it on. The instructions recommend sewing it on nice and loose, and I think that's because during the blocking it's going to get stretched out quite a bit, and you want it to stretch out evenly between the doily that you have and the lace edging that you put on. I actually really like how it looks already, even before blocking, but you can definitely tell that it's going to need a little bit of blocking help to open up the lace work. So in this part, I've already wet the doily and wrung out the excess moisture, and since I don't have blocking mats or blocking pins, I just used a piece of cardboard and some sewing pins that I had on hand. I'm not an expert blocker by any means, I just decided to maybe do the four corners first and then stretch it out in a circle, and this was probably one of the most satisfying things for me to watch, to watch the most intricate lace work that I've ever done really open up as I stretch this piece out.
Okay, so I'm pretty satisfied with how this looks. All I need to do now is wait overnight for the doily to dry so that once I take the pins out, I can be 100% sure that it'll keep its shape. The next morning when I removed the pins, it was incredibly satisfying to see that the doily held its shape even without the pins holding it in place. Okay, so there you have it. That's my completed doily. And I'm really excited to share with you all the notes on the pattern that I took. You can of course work off of the original pattern, but if you want to see the fixes that I decided to make to the doily itself, then you are welcome to use that pattern as well. And once again, thank you so much for watching. Feel free to like and subscribe if you want to see more of these historical knitting videos, and I'll see you next time.